morning, church, and welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church Alive and Online. Welcome to all those who have joined us from near and far. We are honored that you have invited us into your home and into your lives. We come to you from our sanctuary here on Plank Road in Fredericksburg, Virginia. If you're tuning in for the first time, we extend a special welcome to you. We encourage you to interact with us through the Facebook chat. We want to hear from you. You can put your prayer requests in the comments section that runs on the right of our Facebook feed. We are a happening place here at Resurrection, and we have several activities in which you can participate. Right after this worship service, we invite you to our virtual coffee hour. The Zoom link is in our Facebook feed, and we'll start at 11 a.m. Did you know that we have a dynamic and active women's ministry here at Resurrection? Two events are happening this week. The first happens each Wednesday morning at 9.30. The women's book study group got, gathers to offer fellowship, caring conversation, and of course, book study. We are currently studying Blessed to Follow, the Beatitudes as a Compass for Discipleship by Martha Stort. Now, you don't need to have read the book to join in the discussion. This group is open to women of all ages, and the Zoom link can be found in the Facebook feed. The second occurs, the third, the second Monday, let me try that again. The second occurs the second Thursday of each month. The women of the ELCA meet at 9.30 a.m. for fellowship Bible study led by one of the members and caring conversation. This group is also involved in missions such as Collars for Christ, Cooks for Christ, and delivering cookies to local fire station and Micah Ministries, just to name a few. The link is found in our Facebook feed. This week, we began a new worship series entitled Through the Wilderness. Now, if there's an emotion that seems to resonate through the text for this first week of our new series, it's anger. And if there's an emotion that will launch us into a wilderness experience, it is also anger. So this seems to be where we need to begin with praises and swords. Leading us in worship today are Allie Beck, Alex Johnson, and Chuck and Ann Price. In the booth, we have A.J. Beck, Robert Schul, and Jeff Slunt. And I am Heidi Moore, pastor here at Resurrection. So wherever you are, join us as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship of the one true God and sing with us the call to worship, Come All You People. You can find the words on the screen or in the bulletin. And again, welcome. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. 
make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has, been made, has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. The sharing of the peace today is brought to us by Meals for Motels and the Micah Ministries and the group that went out to deliver. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. Join us as we sing our gathering hymn, Oh, That the Lord Would Guide My Ways. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also and also to you. Join us now as we sing Kyrie.
join us for the prayer of the day. O oh God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from me everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Join us now as we sing and hear scripture. A reading from Exodus, the 12th chapter. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lentil of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. 
You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Let us welcome the gospel in song. Gospel according to Matthew, the 18th, the 18th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or more are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. So today we're going to talk about what Jesus had to say about um, looking each other in the eye and bringing our, um, our, our, grie our grievances or our concerns to each other. It's important to look each other in the eye. And it's important that when we have a problem with somebody, that we take that problem to the other person one-on-one. -on -one. Take it to that person first. You know what? Churches are not immune from being or from having conflicts. We are all sinners. That's just who we are. But we show our love for one another when we take our concerns one-on-one -on -one to the person that we have the concern with. Now, I know that's really scary. I get that. We may not want to do that. I get that, too. But show the love of Christ for the person that you're talking with and be sure to look them right in the eye.
There's a tweet floating around that simply says, I miss unprecedented times. It seems like every breath we breathe is filled with unprecedents, from pandemics to racial unrest and inequality to climate change to the political climate, you name it, it's unprecedented. While we may be mostly tucked safely into our homes and away from danger, the fact is, is that we are in the wilderness. I mean really in the wilderness. Now here on Plank Road in Fredericksburg, Virginia, we are in an area that used to be a Civil War battlefield. In fact, this whole area is called the crossroads of the Civil War. And as such, we're not located too far from the wilderness battlefield. As a matter of fact, my commute to this campus takes me through portions of that area. That's right. I drive through the wilderness to get to resurrection. Now, I don't have to drive that way to get here, but it is the shortest and the fastest. Today, we begin a four-week worship series entitled Through the Wilderness, which focuses on texts from the book of Exodus and connections to the gospel text from Matthew's. Now, both of these communities lived through unprecedented times. And maybe this is where I'm supposed to attach the warning label to this sermon. It may make us uncomfortable. We may come face to face with things we don't want to come face to face with. But as Jesus says, where two or more are gathered in my name, I am there also. Now, as a people, we can say when it comes to unprecedented times that we've been there and done that, but it doesn't make it any easier. While there are different aspects to the communities of Moses some 3,000 years ago and Matthew some 2,000 years ago, there is a sameness. Each community was ex experiencing unprecedented times. Now, we are God followers. And wilderness journeys are just a part of it. Moses and the Hebrews wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. And when we see the number 40, that is Bible speak for a really, really long time. Now in this time of Corona tide, we've passed 40 days a long time ago. And we know it won't be 40 years until we get to the other side of this, even though it may feel like it. But it has truly been a really, really long time before we get to the other side, before we have a sense of relief and a sense of resurrection. And we will get there. It won't be easy. People will fall away. People will join us. We may think we'll never get through this. But now more than ever, we must walk this journey together. That's the only way the Hebrews got through the wilderness. And now more than ever, we must remember that we are not alone. That's how Jesus got through his 40-day wilderness adventure with the devil. Now more than ever, let the word of God speak through the text that we study. May we have ears that will listen, even if the listening is hard, even if we don't like what we hear. Maybe it's because it will challenge us in ways that we don't want to acknowledge, in ways that we've admitted to ourselves in secret, but would never admit to others in public. So here we are. Labor Day weekend, a time when we celebrate our country's workers, except there is a problem here. Many still are not back at work. An example, my husband, a worker in the hospitality industry, has been out since the end of March. We don't know when he'll return. We're just praying that, in time, he will return. We're not alone. There are people in our community of faith that are hurting and scared, and rightfully so. And that hurt extends to the world beyond. 
There have been so many people who have been left behind, who are struggling financially, who have lost everything because of the unrest in this country. I know that I have just scratched the surface, and I know that the pain goes so very, very deep. And the suffering continues. And so does the unprecedented amount of anger. Righteous anger, indignant anger, red-hot anger, just plain old anger. Because there's a lot to be angry about. Ongoing injustice in our world. The broken and abusive systems in our society and in our communities. Illnesses that we can't control, much less heal. And what about that self-focused anger rather than other-focused. How many times have we been angry at personal slights and inconveniences, making them, them into big, big deals when they're really not? Welcome to the wilderness, where God is transforming the weapon of our anger and taking our swords and beating them into plowshares filling us with the Holy Spirit, the spirit of healing, unity, and service, and grace, and healing. Welcome to the wilderness. But let's take a look at how we got here. Pharaoh was neither nice or kind. He was fearful, and his fear turned him into a murderer of babies. War was coming to the land, our God against the gods of Pharaoh. Of course, we know who won. So what does God do? He gives the Israelites a liturgy and a ritual and rewrites their narrative. No longer will they be citizens of a system of domination, but rather a community of God followers. And they will remember, using this liturgy of the tragic and violent years, a sacrificial lamb whose blood brings redemption, bitter herbs to remind them of suffering endured and suffering to come. This is a call to new life and a call to embrace change. Transformation is not pain-free, but the reality is without suffering there is no transformation. And they will remember that they are God's people and that God is their God, and that they are children of God. They will remember how God prepared them, made them ready, gave them a sense of urgency, and yet reminded them just how vulnerable they were. Now fast forward to 800 years, to the time when Jesus walked the earth and another group of God followers, another vulnerable community. And it is abundantly evident that Matthew's community was struggling with disputes and the impact of bad behavior and anger and the consequences of those things. Because when members show little regard for each other, the entire community suffers. And here we are in the middle of a pandemic, economic upheaval, racial injustice, cries for reform, and a polarized political landscape. Our entire community, our entire world is suffering. And this is where Jesus goes, to the heart of the manner, matter. We get angry with each other. We are angry. Now, let's be real. Churches are not immune to conflict, and we can be vicious with each other. We are sinners, and we sin. This is not about becoming conflict-free, but rather having conflicts in a healthy, life-giving way. Or as I like to say about our congregation, we are purple because red and blue make purple. And the goal is at the end of the day that while we may not agree, we can still sit down at the same table. We still like each other as well as love each other. We're not perfect, but we're working on it. And Jesus offers a way of dealing with our conflict. And again, let's be honest here. Remind ourselves that we are sinners and that we sin. And think about how we normally engage in conflict, ways that are counterproductive but yet classic. I know. 
I'm guilty of them myself. We want to avoid conflict at all cost. Don't even want to talk about it. Well, except then when we gossip and we tell other people about the person or the offensive behavior, we're not about to talk to that person face to face. And then we gang up on the other. We get like-minded people on our side and we create echo chambers. And then we like to air our grievances in that echo chamber and in front of audiences that are on our side and where there is absolutely no accountability. And finally, we regard those with whom we don't agree with that they are unwelcome. We just want them to go elsewhere, outside of our community, and we cut off. And to all of this, Jesus says no. He says no to all of it. He says no to the avoidance. Go right to the person and the source and share your concerns. He says no to gossip. And again, go right to the person one-to-one in private. Now what does this do? This allows the person to clear up any misunderstanding or to apologize or or to make amends, saving face for all. And when we do that, we communicate respect and we also avoid shaming the other. And it also says, I may have misunderstood something. I might have something to learn here. I'm here to listen, not to prove my point. Jesus says no to ganging up on and creating echo chambers. Again, go to the person directly, but take one or two with you that might provide insight in the situation. This is not the time for your posse. You are here to find common ground and a way forward. Jesus says no to the echo chambers. No sharing with just friendly audiences, not only to those who will agree with you, and also not with those who will agree with the offending party, but the whole community. See, this provides accountability, less exaggeration, omitting of key details, denial of how you or I may have contributed to the problem and how we can help correct it. And the alleged offender is offered the same opportunity of accountability. And finally, Jesus says a huge no to the cutoff from community. Yeah, that's right, no. Let's see, let's work this out. Now, people who insist on destructive and dysfunctional behavior should be held accountable and asked to step away from the community if for a season, however long that season may be. But look how Jesus qualifies this. This teaching is bookended by two parables of mercy and inclusion. And we'll hear about one next week. And consider how Jesus deals with Gentiles and tax collectors. He eats with them. He talks with them. He even hangs out with them. He even includes one of them as one of his closest followers. Matthew was a tax collector. Yes, all are part of the beloved community. We are all part of God's mission. They are still a part. When God says all, he means all. And in all of this, from the Israelites to the disciples to us, we are to be about reconciliation and liberation and justice and healing and repairing of the world. By focusing our anger in transformative ways, by humbling ourselves. We are the God followers that God has called us to be. And so may our anger be turned to love. May our swords be turned to praises. As we go through the wilderness, as we go through transformation, we are reaching and loving and caring for a world in need. 
We are RLC. Amen. together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Unite your church, O God. Grant us the gifts of repentance and reconciliation. Bless the cooperative work of churches in this community, especially the ICC. Strengthen ecumenical partnerships. Guide the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of Churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Protect your creation, O God. Teach us ways that do not harm what you have entrusted to our care. Renew and enliven places suffering from drought and flood and storms and fires and pollution. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Turn nations and leaders from ways that lead to death. Share, shape new paths toward peace and cooperation, teaching us to recognize one another as neighbors and as children of God. Guide legislatures, civil servants, judges, and police toward laws that protect the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit, especially Amy Clausen, Emily, Sam, Jana, David, Bill, Jesse, Paul. Be with those who continually fight this battle of coronavirus. Keep us safe, Lord, and keep us in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain us in our work, O oh God, and give work to those who need it. Shape societies to ensure fair treatment for all who labor. Help us to love our neighbors in and through our work. Lord, in your mercy, <clears throat> hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in faith. As you equip them, equip us with your protection and power until with them we see your salvation. We ask you to especially be with the family of Patty Wainwright. Give them peace and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
all these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we receive an offering in support of the mission and ministry of Resurrection Lutheran Church. And again, this past Saturday, 69 people were fed breakfast as well as dinner as we took meals to motels. We are so grateful for your prayers and for your support of the mission and ministry here at Resurrection Lutheran Church. and he leadeth me, verse 1. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Join us in our celebration song, In Thee is Gladness. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Join us as we sing our sending hymn, One Pure and Holy Passion. As I send you out in mission, remember immediately following this worship service, we have our virtual coffee hour as well as the women's activities this coming week. Next Sunday begins our week of service, God's work with our hands. Be at peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.